Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video today because I'm pretty sure by the time, depending on when you see this, at day roll for me, uh, it should be the part two, well, technically part three banner for summer uh, four that's currently going on. So I wanted to go over the banner, look at the units, give some thoughts about them. I am going to be summoning, so there will be a summon video. But if you want to hear a little bit more about these units and how how they are, how good they are. Chances are most people have already figured out whether or not they're going to summon because summer, for summer, you always summon for the summer units that you love to look at the most. And we got Okita, we have Mysterious Alter Ego Lamba, and we have Bunny Toria. People are summoning, but hey, if you want to know what the units do, <laughs> I'll gladly go over them in this video. So I hope you like it. Comment, tell me which one you're hoping to get. And I'll see and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm already ending it. You can subscribe to me if you want some more. So let's start with uh, Bunny Toria. Now this is going to be interesting because we're currently in a landscape where there's a brand new Buster sir, a Buster support. So it will. I will finally have a, a new way to kind of talk about Buster servants going forth. And I think this is a good example of one of the first ones to talk about. So, Artaria uh, Pendragon, ruler aka Bunny Toria, she's a ruler. Uh, first skill, Royal Bunny A, grants, uh, <laughs> grants, charges own MP gauge, grants self evasion for one turn, grants self Royal Bunny Hop, delayed buff for one turn, Royal Bunny Hop increases own attack for one turn after one turn, MP 40%, 10, at level 10, and attack up is 30% at level 10, and the skill cooldown is 6. Next we have the second skill, which this is in its first form before it gets buffed, Royal Card C+, randomly deals 5 new command cards. This will reset the deck so it becomes the first turn of a new command card cycle, increases party crit damage for 3 turns, it is 50% crit damage up for 3 turns at level 10, and later on when it's buffed to B+, uh, the selected allies command cards will not appear for 1 turn. Uh, for one time, one turn, cannot activate only if one party member is left on the field, randomly deals five new command cards. This will reset the deck so it becomes the first turn of a new command card cycle, increases party's crit damage for three turns, increases party MP generation rate for one turn, and it's 30% MP rate and the crit damage remains the same. Third skill, the Nidal Lion B increases zone attack for three turns, increases zone crit star absorption for one turn. Attack 40% at level 10, and Absorption is 600%. Passive skills are Magic Resistance A, increases on debuff resistance by 20%, increases on Arch Performance by 8% is Territory Creation B. Uh, these are the Append skills, which I'm going to be ignoring for now, because <laughs> there's still not enough info out there to know. Uh, Her Noble Phantasm is an AoE, deals damage that ignores defense buffs to all enemies, charges on NP gauge by 20%. Uh, increase own quick performance for one turn, increase arts performance for one turn, increases own buster performance for one turn. 20%, 20%, 20% at 100% at charge, and at 500% charge it's 40%, 40%, 40%, uh, Also the MP damage is 300% at uh, NP level 1, and 500% at NP level 5. And yeah, that is um, Bunny Toria. So... First of all, let's talk about this second skill, because this is kind of, there's actually two ways you can kind of use her. This first skill, I actually really like. I understand why they gave it a buff to make it a little bit better. This is actually a, a card that's already used on a mystic skill, a mystic, a mystic code, without the crit damage up. It just reshuffles the deck. I really like the ability to shuffle the deck. It's why I use the mystic code that constantly shuffles the deck, because sometimes you get just get dealt a bad hand and you need a new uh either need a new cycle or like a last ditch effort it's obviously sometimes it can completely screw you over and you can get the exact same <laughs> cards as the last time except for now they're in a different order which is why it's really smart that they added uh, this buff which makes it so you can pick one ally and then their cards won't appear until the next turn so that will make it so at least the unit you want will hopefully at least get one or two cards in there. Or you'll get just unlucky and all five of them will go. But still, that's what happens when you play RNG. But I kind of like it because it goes with the, the theme of the event itself. And it goes with the kind of casino owner that 
uh, Buntoria is in the event and everything. So I like it. Next, let's talk about this because uh, if you're not aware of this, over in JP, the new Buster support actually allows for looping with Buster units now. And the way you do it is that you use a Mystic Code that lowers the... Um, that lowers the skill cooldown by two. It also buffs the NP by, uh, what I think it's 50%? Yeah, it's 50%. Um, yeah, charges the NP by 50%, then lowers skill cooldown by two. So it makes it so that these moves end up showing up way earlier. Uh, skill level five is how you would show it up without having to use a mystic code. But if you use a mystic code, you can get upwards to six. So any skill that has at least a skill cooldown of seven, you can use with this uh, kind of method here. So you can actually use, I believe, Bunny Toria to loop if you have Kaleidoscope and the ability to get her up there. And the reason is, is because this skill gives her. As you can see here, a 40% charge, but also her NP gives her a 20% charge, and it's an AoE. So it can actually be used in some cases to loop with Buster, which would be nice. So I think the way the turn order would go in my mind, and excuse me if I get it wrong, because it's it's really new if you're listening to this. It literally just came out um, not even five days ago, I think. Uh, so let me see. So yeah, you'd have to start with Kaleidoscope at 100%. You would then use it, boom, you start the NP with 20%, you then use this skill that will give you 60%, and then you would use skill 1 to give 50%, then you use the NP again, you start with 20% NP again, you use the second skill to use it again, you're now at uh, 70%, you're at 70% now, you then use the Mystic Code to lower her cooldowns again, and now you should be able to use this move and then boom, 100% loop. Buster loop. <laughs> it's it's amazing to talk about, but it's totally possible. So she has, I think, viability enough. And being a ruler, it ends up being that she doesn't have a lot of units that she can really take out herself. But that also means that she has a decent number of units that just have no advantage over her. So that's nice. I like that. So cool thing to do. You can definitely loop with her with the right conditions and with the right attack power kind of boosting up on her. She should be able to get most of that stuff done. So I really hope I get her when I'm summoning for her. I'm summoning for her regardless because look at her. That's the reason why I'm summoning. I was <laughs> It was already decided. It's nice that JP decided to release a unit that kind of buffs her in some way. So next, speaking of Lupin... We've got the ultimate looper here. We got Lambda, who I've... There we go. Mysterious hero, uh, mysterious Alter Ego A, a.k.a. Lambda. First skill, Swan Lake A. This is an extremely easy unit to talk about. Increase zone arts performance for 5 turns. It's for 20% for 5 per turns. Second skill, Perfect Fluid B. Grant self invincibility. Increase own buff removal resistance for 1 turn. 500% chance to get self water field battlefield buff for three turns. Third skill absorbs party's NP gauge except self. The amount of NP drain on the allies equal to the amount of NP charged by the skill user increases own crit star absorption for one turn. NP absorb is 30% at level 10. Absorption is 500%. Attack is 50% up for one turn. Her passive skills are magic resistance B, writing C. Which magic resistance we actually just mentioned, I guess. Increase own debuff resistance by 17.5%. Writing C increases own quick performance by 6%. Independent action EX increases own crit damage by 12%. Goddess Essence C increases own uh, damage by 200. Increases own debuff resistance by 20%. A high servant, no effect. Her noble phantasm blue summer paladin. That summer dew is like glass. It removes all enemies' evasive buffs on water field on water side field. Deals damage and ignores defense for all enemies. It's three hits. Uh, gains crit stars, and that's all you need to know. At level one, her damage is 450 percent. You get 20 crit stars at charge a level 100, and at 500 you get 40. She is extremely good for looping. <laughs> She is an art servant who later on will kind of get her. You can probably do it now 
to be honest, with uh, Tamamo if you get that system going. Uh, but because she's AoE and she is Arts, and she ends up having this ability here which lets her to absorb the party's MP gauge, which is very nice. <laughs> which can give her, I think, 60% if you buff the other twos, if they have enough MP to give, I believe that is. I believe that's how it works. But either way, very good unit, easy to loop with, easy to look at. She has an amazing Mystic Code. This, which is the reason I want her, it's the it's the glasses. Where is it? Look at that! It's amazing. That's why I want her. I hope I get her. <laughs> She's really cool. She can be useful for that. And then finally, we have Okita. The long meme finally becomes a reality as Okita becomes a quick meme servant who is extremely hilarious. First skill. I'm gonna have a hard time saying this one. Jetian Russian Rio. Increases on crit damage for one turn, increases on crit star absorption for one turn, removes one of the uh, latest defensive buffs, demerit. Uh, crit damage up is at level 10, 100%, and 800% absorption of crit stars. Eye of the Mind J, A minus. Grants self evasion for one turn, ignores evasion for one turn. It, yeah, ignores evasion for one turn. Increases on MP damage for three turns, 20% at level 10. Third skill, M Drive EX, increases on quick performance for three turns, reduces own defense by 20% every turn for three turns, starting uh, with 10% on turn one, treated as a buff, but it is obviously a demerit. 50% up quick uh, damage, turn one 10% uh, in defense lost, turn two it is 30%, and then turn three it is 50% more damage you are taking. Her passive skills are Presence Concealment J B minus increases own crit star generation rate by 7.5 percent, reduces own insta kill resistance by 10 percent, uh, magic resistance J C increases own debuff resistance by 10 percent, reduces own insta kill resistance by 10 percent, and existence outside of the domain E gains two crit stars every turn, increases own debuff resistance by 2 percent. Oh god, this noble phantasm Jet Three Stage Thrust. Hmm. Hits three times, deals damage to all enemies, removes their defensive buffs. 60% chance to stun self for one turn. And it is a MP1, her damage is 600%. It is 1000 if you get her to MP5. Reduces their defense for three turns at a charge of 100%, it's 30%. And if you get all the way to 500%, it is 50%. And I can't remember if it's all here. Uh, this is Swim Pseudo Kita. If you can get her quick stuff going, she can deal a lot of- Oh, she, also she's an assassin. She can deal a lot of quick damage, for sure. The big problem here is this. The 60% chance to stun self for one turn is effectively a death sentence. There's no- there's no good. There's no good to this. There's actually absolutely everything bad about the 60% chance. Obviously, there's a 40% chance for it not to happen, but most of the time she'll get stunned. So if you try and do some kind of loop, obviously the best thing you can do with her is to hopefully on turn one um, use it, and then hopefully there's two cards that the other team can do, and then on turn two use none of her cards, and then on turn three, you can use the rest of the cards. Because I think the stun lasts for... Is it only one turn? I actually don't know if she'd be ready... No, she should be ready. Actually, I don't know, to be 100%. I guess the one turn stun would only really affect her for once, but... Yeah, she should be fine by the next turn. Either way, um, this basically kills any hope of her being good for looping. But she is an extremely funny unit, and as you can see here, she's extremely built to just deal a lot of quick performance. Honestly, if they ever buff her to remove this ability to get herself stunned, I think she'd be an amazing looping unit for assassins, because there's not really a lot of them out there. Um, but other than that, if you love Okita, I think she's going to be a fantastic unit for you to use and actually play with because, again, she has a very interesting playstyle of, like, a berserker who's an assassin because she's just... <laughs> it's amazing if you can actually keep her alive for any set amount of time because it really feels like she just is built to get completely stomped at any given moment. 
But if you're someone who definitely does not care much about Okita, uh, or is indifferent to Okita, if you get the other two units, you're kind of free to dip out of the banner. At least at this point, they haven't seen the need to buff her, and I feel like they're not really planning on it. It's so rare for them to ever buff a summer unit. I'm even surprised that uh, Bunny Toria even got one. That's how rare it is for me to ever see a summer unit get buffed. But again, she is very cute to look at, and she has that going for her. And if you can get this quick arts, uh, quick arts, these three quick cards in one turn, have some good stuff going on it, it might be pretty good for a single target kind of attack. But this 60% on NP, man, it's tough. It's extremely tough to deal with this move. It's just so unbelievably bad. It's funny. And it's a real shame because this unit has been a long awaited. And it's kind of like one of those things that's like, yeah, you can use her and have fun with her. Just know that that NP, man, it can bite you in the ass. But you got to be the kind of person who doesn't mind if Okita bites you in the ass. Well, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I'll see you guys in the summon video that's coming up. If I was wrong by one day, then I guess I'll see you whenever the hell they release that banner, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be on uh, Wednesday. If it's not, I'm going to look like a dumb dumb, and that's on Thursday. But either way, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye-bye.